Hello, my name is Nick Debra, and in this short video, I'm going to give you a bit of a preview of my practical charts course, and so you can decide if it's right for you or your team. Specifically in the video, I'm going to talk about what the practical charts course is and who it's for, what exactly you're going to learn how to do by the end of the course, and I'll give you some, uh, some examples. We're going to talk about also just a brief overview of the major topics and the agenda and the workshop. What makes this course perhaps different than other uh, data visualization courses uh, that are out there? And a little bit about me, uh, about the instructor. So what exactly is the Practical Charts course? Well, it's a data visualization fundamentals course that teaches you how to make charts that are engaging, i.e. charts that are actually going to get read, they're going to get used, they're not going to get ignored. Also to make charts that are obvious, that don't leave people wondering you know, okay, I understand, but what is the point of this chart? What should I be getting from it? Also charts that are accurate because it's surprisingly easy to accidentally mislead our audience, to misrepresent the data. And ultimately to make charts that are effective, that accomplish the goal, the purpose, that initially sort of prompted you to create a chart in the first place. It's uh, always delivered live by, by me, uh, me personally, either online as four half days for up to 30 participants. I keep it uh, limited uh, to that number to uh, allow for lots of one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction and feedback, or in person, which I'm starting to do now, which is two full days with up to 60 participants per workshop. I offer it in a few uh, open registration workshops per year, usually about three a year. Most of the workshops that I deliver though are private, uh, many of those every year. Who exactly is the course for? Well, it's for pretty much anyone who creates charts as part of their job. And so these days, that actually represents a pretty wide cross section of the workforce. The obvious people are, are people like data analysts, financial business policy analysts, data scientists, statisticians, software developers. But also there are lots of sales and marketing professionals who take uh, the course, HR people, uh, healthcare professionals, journalists, even researchers, because of course, we're, uh, many of us are handling data now. We need to communicate it to others. And people come from a very broad variety of different sectors, everything from banking, finance, insurance, telecom, uh, retail, healthcare, engineering, uh, education. Uh, a sampling of my clients are listed here. There are many others, and you can see they come from a pretty broad variety of different, different sectors. Also, uh, in terms of skill level, there, there's a pretty wide range. Uh, it's suitable for people who are relatively new to data visualization but also for people who have years or even decades of experience, because just because you've been working with data for a long time doesn't necessarily mean that you've mastered the skills to communicate data effectively to others. And it's not really built around any particular tool, whether you use Excel or Tableau or Click or D3 or, or any other tool, the fundamentals around data visualization don't really change. Why take this course? Well, I think a bit of context is probably useful here. There's been a lot of talk in recent years about making charts that tell a story or support data-driven decisions or unlock the power of data or even make it beautiful. This all sounds great, but certainly in my experience anyways, reality is, well, a little less rosy. Most charts in most organizations are unobvious, right? What is the point of this chart? I don't know. Or just confusing, right? Not even clear on what the numbers actually mean. What am I even looking at? Uh, or accidentally misleading, and that's surprisingly easy to do. For example, we have a chart here. It looks like a pretty reasonable chart uh, showing the uh, the breakdown of our three portfolios. I guess we're a money management company, and we have our aggressive, balanced, and uh, conservative portfolios, and each have different breakdowns of different uh, types of assets uh, by risk. Technically, this is a perfectly fine chart, but what's the point? Right, what am I trying to get from this? It's not particularly obvious. So this is kind of an unobvious chart. Something like this is much more obvious. It's the same data, but now of course, it's pretty clear that the aggressive portfolio just has a lot more of these kind of high risk assets. And I could even make it even more explicit if I wanted to say that that is the point of this chart. The aggressive portfolio contains more high risk assets. That was absolutely not obvious from this uh, other chart. Or, uh, you know, our vehicle sales here being broken down by vehicle type looks like a perfectly reasonable chart until we realize that, you know what, pickup trucks, this type of vehicle, well, that's actually a subset of trucks. 
and sports cars are actually a subset of cars. And so even though this pie chart makes it look like there's, uh, you know, almost half of our sales are cars, I'm not really sure because sports cars are actually included within cars. And so this is actually very confusing. I'm not quite sure what to make of this. Ah, okay, so now essentially the kind of overlapping nature of the categories is much more clear. I can see that, yes, sports cars are a subset of all cars and pickup trucks are a subset of, of all trucks. Ah, okay, not confusing anymore. Or let's look at another example. So here we're looking at US motor vehicle deaths for the last number of decades. And it looks like the big story here is that there's this big dip in the 90s, of course. That seems to be the big takeaway. But then we kind of have a closer look and realize that actually these time intervals are not equal, right? We have intervals of 10 years, 10 years, 10 years, and then we go down to intervals of five years. And so of course there's gonna be a dip because yeah, there's gonna be fewer deaths during five year periods than there will be during uh, 10 year periods. And so this is uh, actually misleading because the time intervals are not uh, the same. This unfortunately is kind of a common mistake, but it distorts the true pattern of change. If we wanna show patterns of change, of course, we have to make sure that our intervals of time are the same, are equal. After the course, you'll be able to, of course, avoid these problems and create charts that get read instead of ignored because they make key insights and takeaways obvious. They also require minimal time and effort for readers to read because that's a common reason why people don't look at charts because it requires uh, too much cognitive effort. We're gonna minimize that. And we're gonna make sure that we don't accidentally misrepresent the data. I showed you just one example. There are many ways that people accidentally misrepresent the data even when they're not trying to lie to anyone. Ultimately, the goal of the course is to teach you enough so that you can handle virtually all of the data visualization challenges that you're likely to encounter in your day-to-day -day work. Now, of course, there are a lot of different types of challenges that we face uh, in our day-to-day -day work when it comes to data visualization, which is why the course has a lot of breadth and depth of content. We talk about a lot of different topics. In fact, there are over 450 slides that we cover in four intensive half days or two intensive full days if we're doing it live. We're gonna talk about over 40 chart types because there are important cases where each one of these is in fact uh, not just the best, but perhaps even the only way to clearly and accurately uh, present data in a given situation. We're gonna talk about lots of different types of common challenges with solutions, of course, things like how to visualize outliers. This can be challenging until you know a tricks like inset charts, for example, which I'm showing here, or how to visualize cyclical data, for example, seasonal data or data with weekly or monthly cycles or how to represent missing values accurately. This is something that often people don't get right. And then they end up, of course, accidentally misrepresenting uh, the data. It's just one more way to do that. The course also contains a lot of very specific best practices. For example, uh, you know, it can be tricky to decide when to use, for example, a pie chart uh, versus other chart types when you're trying to show the breakdown of a total. Well, there's specific guidance given so that for any given situation, you can make the best possible uh, design choice. Or uh, when you need to actually include zero in your chart scale. Again, this is actually a surprisingly kind of tricky design decision and it can really affect how people perceive the data. And so in the course, there's very specific guidance on how to make all of these design decisions. In fact, there are over 25 of these design tools in the course. Another thing that I think makes this course uh, a bit different is that there is a lot of interactivity to it. There are lots of interactive exercises and uh, opportunities to practice what's learned during the course. There are actually six interactive kind of let's fix this chart together activities where I bring up a chart live in Excel and then we all decide how we're going to uh, improve it. There are also two uh, breakout sessions where in small groups, uh, participants complete quizzes and discuss uh, questions amongst themselves and then, of course, we talk about the uh, the responses, and these are used to demonstrate many important principles and best practices. And then at the end of the course, there are two design challenges where I give the breakout groups realistic scenarios, and then using illustration tools like PowerPoint, for example, they actually sketch out solutions. And so this is where we basically apply everything that we've learned during the course. And then, of course, we look at each group's uh, solutions and talk about it uh, right at the end. In terms of uh, agenda, major topics, 
we uh, begin with uh, talking about uh, data visualization myths. There's a lot of them floating around out there, and it's actually important to sort of dispel them before we can make effective charts. Uh, talk about the reasons why charts fail, and then general formatting best practices that apply to all charts. And so talking about things like how to uh, properly format scales, color choice, really important, legends, text, uh, you know, borders, tick marks, axes, that kind of thing. And then we get into what I call the big seven chart type section, which is basically about chart selection. Uh, in fact, in this section, this is where we'll encounter over 40 different uh, types of charts and, of course, when to use each. Then we'll talk about making charts obvious through things like visual highlighting and adding callouts and sort of explicit insights to charts. Uh, some more common challenges and solutions, which we haven't talked about uh, until uh, this point. What I call what about, uh, talking about things like, you know, what about dual access charts? What about even things like AI that might automate data visualization in the future? And then we do our design challenges and then so some kind of wrap up towards the end. I should mention topics that aren't covered because of course people use this term data visualization in lots of different ways to mean different things. Uh, we're not going to talk about sort of specialized artistic charts. We're just going to stick to simple, what I call everyday charts, even though they're actually not that simple to design, but they should look simple to our users. We're also not going to uh, address dashboards specifically. I have a whole other course called Practical Dashboards, which covers the very unique challenges associated uh, with dashboards. We're also not going to really talk about charts for analyzing data. These are more sort of typically complex charts. We're just going to stick to charts that are used to communicate data to audiences, which tend to be uh, simpler charts. This is also not a training course that's going to teach you how to use any particular type of software. I mentioned the names of all the chart types that I show, and so you can easily Google uh, tutorials on how to create anything that you see in the course. And we stick to basically very sort of simple features of, uh, of these products. And so uh, there's nothing esoteric in terms of specialized product knowledge, for example, or specialized product features that might be uh, required. Briefly, a uh, word about myself. So I've been teaching data visualization and dashboard design uh, for a long time. I've taught the, these, these skills to thousands of professionals in uh, many different countries when we were allowed to travel. Hopefully that'll be soon again. I have a software background, but of course, this is not a course about software. In fact, most of what we learn is actually more about psychology and how uh, perception works and what kinds of visual tasks people find easier or hard. Through this experience though, uh, I did have a number of senior roles. And so I've been on the receiving side of a lot of bad charts and I have a pretty good understanding of what decision makers need in terms of charts to help them make decisions. Uh, I'm working on two books at the moment. They will come out uh, by the end of 2022, Practical Charts, a book that will be based on this course and uh, Practical Dashboards. Uh, I've done talks at conferences, created videos uh, that now have many tens of thousands of uh, YouTube views for whatever that's worth. And I am delightfully charming, truly a pleasure to learn from for 14 hours. I try, this is my way of saying I like to use a lot of humor <laughs> in, my, in my courses, keep things lively uh, and keep everyone uh, engaged. I also taught the courses of Stephen Few, who probably a lot of people who are going to watch this video probably encountered Steve's work before. Uh, I taught his courses from about 2014 till 2019 when Steve retired, and then I started developing my own courses. This is one of them, the uh, Practical Charts course. I've been lucky enough to get lots of very positive feedback. In fact, to be honest, I haven't gotten any really negative feedback about the course so far, uh, uh, which has been gratifying. I trust that you will have a uh, similar experience if you decide to take the course. More information at practicalreporting.com. You can also uh, reach out to me uh, directly. And I hope that you found this little course preview video helpful and that perhaps I'll see you in an upcoming workshop. Thanks for listening.